This video is sponsored by the Opus 1800, the portable power station that will handle all of your portable power needs. Click the link in the description and use code FLORB for 10% off your purchase. And remember to subscribe. Hi, my name is Vladimir Martos. I am a builder and a captain of the Replica Frigate Standard. We are now in Rhodos, Greece, here for the winter, and uh, I'm very happy to show you my ship. I'm a boy from St. Petersburg, and St. Petersburg, Russia, was considered as a maritime capital of the country. And then I saw at a certain moment that there is not a single sailing ship in my beautiful city. And it was like really not right. And I thought, okay, I have to do something. Up to that moment, I was racing on windsurfing for 15 years for a national team. And I was a student of shipbuilding university. So. And I decided for the city of St. Petersburg, it would be nice to have historical replica from the time when Tsar Peter was creating a navy back to 1703. I was searching for the good story to tell, and I found a model of standard in the Hermitage and Menshikov Museum. It's a beautiful model, it's absolutely gorgeous. And the day I saw the model, I decided I want that ship sailing again. So welcome to Standard, we are in the front part of the ship, it's called Forecastle, that's uh, actually crew, crew deck, we have a bowsprit here, bowsprit is very special for Standard, because that time, 1703, uh, bowsprits, they has no water stay, no rope which would hold the bowsprit down, so all the stay and all the foremast is actually sitting on a piece of timber like that, so that's quite special. Also here we have a traditional, uh, in Russian, galyun, or heads. Have a look how the heads was organized at that time. So the, the toilet in that time, that was very simple, just a hole in the wood. Well, the reason why it's here, because those years, ship was not motoring against the wind. They was always sailing with the wind. So the wind was always from that direction. That's why the chimney was here. It was the only permitted smoking place. That was the toilet there. Here we have our stays and this natural hemp rope. That was done specially for replica ship Batavia, and later they gave it to me. So it's hemp treated with tar, and it's 27 years old now, and it's still fine. And we are using that, and it's really much, much better than synthetic ropes. Then we made all the decorations and all the carvings as it would be in Tsar Peter time. Not because we had the pictures from the Facebook from his time, but because we know that the builders was not from the uh, Academy of Art. They were just simple peasants in a village of Russia, so they, the most thing they could invent is something what they could see in the nature. So the eagle clouds, that was something that could be decorated there. But we have a, uh, heads, this, uh, this carving and the sculpture is a portrait of friends of mine, our chief carpenter, Sergei, and uh, my best friend who was helping me to raise funds, Gregory, Gregory Palmer. So their portraits are there. And also the mermaids, in front we have a mermaids. On the starboard side we have uh, portraits of our present crew. And on the port side it's a portrait of our team of builders. So they faces always with us and we are sailing with the mermaids, with the portraits of the building team. This is a topor I gave an English man, which he received from his father. And this is another English man, who is now remonting the ship, the wooden ship, in 1816. That was an interesting time for Russia, 1992, it's just collapse of Soviet Union, just perestroika, a lot of hopes, a lot of opening, a lot of just new motivation to do something good, and I decided, okay, I'll do that. I had a very lucky chance when a friend of mine called me saying, I talked to the forester, he has seven oak trees for you to cut. So that was uh, November 94, when we went to the forest, cut down seven oak trees and we start building the ship, start making a keel, making frames. First couple of years we were working only on our own savings. Now we're just slowly moving forward and to the moment when we have a skeleton, 
people start thinking, oh, it's going to be something interesting. So it was more and more young people joining and the team was growing. So first year we were three, next year we were six, and the year we were 12, like every year we were doubling the number of people around. Well, uh, we trying to keep you very close historically, uh, but things like that, the life rafts, we cannot really hide away. So they're a bit spoiling the picture, but we have a ship's bell. This uh, 1703, the figure, it's of course a copy, we made it with our own motto and our own motto is life is what you make it. So that is there on the ship's bell, always with us. We are now going on the main deck. This is the main deck or the cannon deck or gun deck. We have seven cannons here in all time that would be 22 cannons on this deck and six on a, on a stern. So this is six pounders. Six pounders means that the weight of the cannon is six pounds, it's about two kilos, 800 grams. Pretty heavy. Uh, it was very heavy loaded, very heavy uh, armed ship for, for her time. And uh, yeah, we tried to fire a cannon ball. It goes for about two miles, almost four kilometers. And that's pretty impressive. Yeah, and uh, interesting thing from that time, that was not allowed to fire all the cannon on one side. So broadside from the ship, it's not all at once. They had to do it, tin, 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 tin. Otherwise they would break the ship or capsize here. That is a pretty big danger. Here on the main deck, we have a capstan and that's for, if you saw the Pirates of the Caribbean, to call the Kraken. But in our case, we're using that to get anchor up. Our anchor about 300 kilos and the anchor chain another 300 kilos. So 600 kilos we have to raise by hand. You put it in and then everyone is walking around like that. So 600 kilos to lift, it needs some good teamwork. So that works for that. People very often ask, what are those? See those big timbers? And on a warship, they always had uh, spare top masts and spare yards because during the battle, that would be the first thing which could be damaged or they probably would need to replace it. So we are carrying a spare top mast as it would be that time. But it's also practical because we have our dinghy stored there when, we, when it's not in the water. In the very front of the boat, forecastle. And under forecastle, we have a bosun store. So we have our ropes, we have our paint, all the tar and all this stuff for treating the timber. So this is where the bosun live and uh, well, I'm afraid to go there. Some, something strange might come out of that, but all ropes stored there. Bosun is the person who is in charge for the ship's material, the ropes for the timber, for, for the deck, for water tightness. So he is in charge to keep the ship alive, actually. Bosun is the most important figure on the sailing ship. Uh, so all sailors really communicate with Bozon because he's giving them the work to do. Well, we have our block and tackles to get our dinghy up. And you probably saw the dinghy is also our push boat and bow thruster when necessary. We made the barrels as our garbage bins. So that's in style and uh, yeah, doesn't spoil the, the appearance of the ship. We have uh, doors as it would be that time. Well, with exception, we put a little bit rubber for the water tightness. And now we are in the uh, crew quarters. In Russian, we call it quarter deck. That's where the hammocks are, where the crew leaves that time. Well, actually, the crew of the standard was 150 soldiers during the war, 120 in peacetime. Cannons, they were like grouping around the cannons. Uh, so this is the, the way how it would be organized. Couple chests, cannon, table over that. So for the meal they have it, for, for the battle they remove the table. So that would be the typical cell for the ship where the group of uh, cannoneers and sailors live. And the hammocks, well, people doesn't really trust in that, but hammock is much, much better than normal bank because when the ship is sitting on the side under sail, hammock keep you quiet and nice and comfortable, still vertical. The big boost was when the uh, ambassador of the Netherlands, he came there to watch and he really was enthusiastic. So he was helping to find business sponsors. So we, we, we've got really good supporters behind. And the next uh, was um, the British gentleman from Dolphin Exhibitions Company. So he subscribed himself for two years, every month's donation of 1,000 pounds. Not that much, 
but for us that time to have reliable sorts of uh, funding for the next months that was most valuable so we went to the forest which was planted by Peter the Great now it's protected forest so we were the first people which we were allowed to cut trees there because we were building the ship of Tsar Peter because he meant that forest for shipbuilding so it was Siberian large the tallest tree I cut was 48 meters tall so we arranged for a special milling 12 meters long planks 36 feet single plank can you imagine and uh, yeah then the special kiln seasoning and then we were continuing no, no one would stay on our way so we were doing that and the team was great actually the team was like a family all my team was volunteering until the last three months before launching then we had a chunk of money and then I decided we must keep a schedule and uh, only three months when we were working for money otherwise we were working for for the for love, for, for the sake of uh, the earth. So we were ready to launch her and uh, we had a royal patron to that moment, Prince Andrew, Duke of York, the governor of St. Petersburg was a patron. So that has become a really high profile event in the city of St. Petersburg. Yeah, that, so basically that's the story. We launched her on the uh, 4th of September uh, 1999 with a crowd of 40,000 people, with all ambassadors on the stage, with all the top people and with fireworks, like all city knew. And it was like all city of St. Petersburg with almost 5 million people. They think this is their ship. And I'm very proud about that. So we made the people's ship for the city. Not for someone very rich person, but for the city. Down below, we have not made the hold how it would be that time, because we need some space for us to live. So we have a galley, we have a mess room and the engine room and the crew accommodation. Welcome, have a look. So we are in the mess room. That's the most comfortable place of the ship, right in the center. So less movement. And that's where the crew gets together for a meal, for the movie in the evening. Here we have a galley and uh, to feed 40 people from this galley, it's a bit challenging, but uh, possible. So we have electric stove we decide not to go for gas because it's danger and uh, yeah around the corner we have engine room with two big engines and two generators the engines are volvos and it's 560 horsepower each that's way too big uh, for us but that was a donation from volvo which we are really grateful and it's nice to have some extra reserve of power so on the right side chief mate's cabin on the port side captain's cabin uh, have a look not too many people with the camera look there it's mostly sleeping sleeping place 22 years in this towel that's uh, something but i am enjoying my own shower and toilet we have watertight doors uh, it's a modern achievement of the sailing ships because if one of the compartment of the ship has a leakage then the others are still staying afloat and as a crew accommodation we have 12 banks for for the crew and uh, come and have a look what kind of comfort we have here so it's like in the Russian trains, overnight trains, and every crew have their own uh, box for, for the things. And uh, yeah, we have two showers and toilets, and even washing machine, which is not working at sea because all the sensors got mad, but in a port, we could enjoy washing machine. Let's have a look what we have for other facilities. Okay, uh, so it's on starboard on the port side and full-time crew, they have a very tiny cabin in front for four person. And uh, yeah, imagine people living here. Oops, pardon. People living here most of the time. Uh, not that much space and probably you need a fish eye to, to film that. Yeah, when, uh, when it's a rough sea, that's a, maybe the worst part of the ship. And if it's a heavy storm, some water is coming a little bit. So it's also combined with jacuzzi, but uh, what to do. Now we are going back up on the upper deck. 
Well, you see what's happening in the modern world. We have a speed of life increasing every next year. It's faster, faster, faster. And we're leaving behind a lot of important uh, experiences and uh, abilities. And uh, that's going to the wrong direction totally. We are all so much relying on uh, electronics, on the computers, on the internet. So we are unprotected. If something goes wrong, the whole planet is not protected. So I'm sure we must keep the basic knowledge somewhere, because anything might happen. And uh, sailing skill is one of those knowledges. Building ships, operating ships is some basic knowledge we must keep. And uh, working with our own hands, people working less and less, they, they, they have all the robots and everything. I think it's uh, important just in general. You may not use it, you still may be very good use, uh, user of the computer system, but you have to know what it is. If you don't, you are not protected. And yeah, we, we have to use nature, we, we have to be together with nature, not against it. So, uh, if you know how to use it, it will be really give you a lot of benefits. Again on the main deck and now going to officers' quarters. So in the old days, that was a very strict separation ordinary sailors and officers and actually royal marines you are in between them to make sure that in case of mutiny the officers still stay alive so that is a officer's area steering wheel captain was here and the normal sailors will allow it only to do some work and then they have to go and the captain's cabin down below please follow me So the steering wheel, it's a special because it's only rope, no hydraulic, no electric, no autopilot. You have to do it real way, and, but that's very comfortable. Uh, things we are hiding from public, two handles for the engine room, so we, we could have a very good control over the ship with two engines. Now we are getting in to the captain's cabin. So this is a uh, officer's or captain's quarters. Well, some technologies from 17th century. And this is my office. I'm uh, working here and I'm receiving all the visitors. And it's also a navigation room. So we have a replica of Peter the Great radar, a replica of Peter the Great time computer, and of course a radio, M MFHF radio for a long range, IAS, and then communication for the loud speaking system. So all what is necessary. And it's really comfortable. I mean, after all these years, I found it's most comfortable navigation. You could see anything, everything, very easy. And working here is exceptionally good. You have beautiful view from the windows and you could always have a sea view. Wherever you go and you have a sea view. And uh, up there, the names of our sponsors, companies who was helping us to build the ship. And of course, uh, above the table, we have a crown, which is not a crown, but actually a compass, which is supposed to be over the uh, captain's hammock. Portrait of Peter the Great and half model of the standard. Something I'm very sentimental about, that's a blessing of the ship came with this bottle of champagne. So that is already 22 years here. You see what, what was written here, and that, that's we mean it. Life is what you make it, so you have to make your own decision. And when you decide that uh, you want to build a ship, yeah, you, you will do it. But you'll come what, what comes with that. You, you have a sleepless nights. You will be worrying if it's enough timber or enough money or something. But that will come. And uh, when people ask themselves, can they do it or not, in both cases they are right. If they say, yes, I can, that means they can. Only if they tell themselves, no, I can't. Uh, well, if they don't trust in themselves, they wouldn't get the result. This is the Opus 1800 portable power station. The Opus 1800 works without a bunch of annoying noise, no fuel, no gasoline. With the ultra stable lithium iron phosphate batteries, Opus offers you a six times longer lifespan than ordinary lithium batteries, making them incredibly safe. The Smart HD LCD display greatly enhances the customer's interaction experience of charging power, over temperature warnings, safety warnings, charging time, function status, and power display. 
and it's cost effective. Considering how much power supply you get, the price is very affordable. The Opus 1800 portable power station will support 99% of home appliances, tools, and even larger appliances such as electric stoves and electric microwave ovens. It safeguards you and your devices with over voltage, over current, and over temperature protection. So click the link in the description and use code FLOOR for 10% off your purchase. Thank you for watching. Have a great week.